Welcome to the ACCA SBL for the latest pricing for the March 2024 exam. And the uh, case information, uh, so we are given by the ACCA, and the case name is called Athletic Transcentral Football Club. All right. Now, uh, for the March 2024 exam questions, it will be based on this company, short for AT. My name is Steve, the fellow member of ACCA. So in this recording onwards, I'll be taking you through to the latest precinct applications and to map it with the SBL syllabus. Now firstly, as always, I've prepared you with the precinct analysis note written by myself. And for this case, from my perspective, I will be going through, as you can see on the screen, 17 chapters altogether. The first chapter, I'll be taking you through to the entire precinct and giving you lots of background information and also the real life companies as well. Followed by the pestle analysis by identifying the macro environments that the business is operating in, which is the Athletic Transcentral Football Club, short for AT. Analyzing the industry by using the five forces to see whether or not this industry is attractive or not. And even performing the value chain analysis, okay, for this company. And of course, from my perspective, the human resource management will be the very key in this industry. And this is why if you see the financial statement of the football clubs, most likely the intangible asset value will be particularly high. I'll explain in a second. Followed by chapter five, I'd like to touch on the governance issue. Because nowadays, the, the at company, which means the athletic transcentral football club, is not listed at the moment. And what if the, it becomes a listed company later on the exam date? Of course, we will need to see the corporate governance issues, followed by the environmental issues, ESG, so building in, the risk strategy, and also related to audit, and also the technology and data analysis will be built in. Of course, in this recording, I'll show you how internal controls, cultural analysis, leadership, and also evaluation of particular projects by performing the, for example, the uh, marginal costing analysis and MPV and so on, project management, change management, and also process management, and last but not least, talent management in the final chapter. Now, the way you're gonna be taking you through to the pre scene of course, as you can see on the screen, you can download this from the uh, uh, ACCA if you uh, are going to sit the March 2024 SBO exam. Firstly, in this recording, I'll be taking you through to the introduction okay, of this industry. Of course, I'd like to complicate it as well, because my view is this. As always, okay, if you can see in my previous recordings for September 2023, December 2023, I've tipped correctly more than 50% of the areas coming up in the actual exam. And my view for the SBO exam is this. ACCA has done us a favour by releasing the very complicated case background information two weeks before the actual exam. This does not necessarily mean that you can simply read that information until, yes, plan your answer and even write your answer on the exam date without knowing any practical knowledge okay, regarding the case background. Of course, ACCA does officially say that uh, doing a lot of research into real life companies is not necessary. However, my SBO student, of course, achieved very high in the past that they know exactly what is happening uh, in the real life and why the information in the pre is given. They know the reasons. And this is why when they're constructing their answers on the exam date, their answers, yes, very high quality. So therefore, my view is that when I apply and to read the information from a pre 
I would like to bring the real life companies in and show you the possibilities of how we're going to be thinking about that issue. Followed by the uh, sector information and the country that we are operating in is called Kyoland. Okay, again, it's a fake country. Okay, to just to avoid any political stuff. Follows by quite a lot of things in there, and then chapter three. Yes, our company is called At or Athletic Trans Central Football Club. Yes, we've got teams and we've got board structures, information systems and stadiums and so on, and, and, and also the website extract of our company, and also finally this selective summary of the financial information. Now, let me take you through to the introduction firstly. Now, this is a football, or you can call it a soccer club, and plays in the football league, okay, in the country called Kyoland. And Kyoland is a country in the, in the continent of Russia. Okay, it's like the European Union, something like that. And the club is owned by AT Company. Okay, now Athletic Trans Central Company. Now our company has the sole objective of operating the club. Okay, so whether or not we're going to be diversifying the business. I think the answer is probably no. Okay, so we're going to see why in a second. Now the 80 football club, very successful, but increasingly struggle to compete with others. Now, my view is that the competition is quite severe, okay, in this market. So this is why you need to always think about to really increase the revenue streams, okay, in terms of the amount of revenues they can get, and also the number of streams, okay. So we're going to be seeing that later on. I.e., yes, to differentiate yourself from others, okay, by relying on the high performance key players in particular. Now, we are told the 80, okay, is used in the actual exam questions. Now, firstly, I will take you through to chapter one of my notes firstly. I've summarised the key point from the pre scene. Yes, Ats is a football club and owned by 80 and very successful. Uh, and this is why this is the introduction paragraph there. Now, this is absolutely not enough from my perspective. Now, I would like to take you a step further. Firstly, if you can see the design of a kit of AT, uh, based on my own imaginations, okay, because from the pre scene later on you will see that the AT's traditional colours are white shirt with black sleeves and black shorts and socks. Okay, I imagine the picture like, looks like that. All right, so uh, through a bit of research, I understand that a bit similar to Juventus, okay, is a football club based in Italy, and also Newcastle United, okay, you can see the kit design from there. Besides, I'd like to show you that currently 80 is not listed, and is owned by the family members. Now, if that's the case then, what sort of football clubs in real life that will be very similar to the AT? athletic transcentral company? Well, my answer would be Manchester United. Okay, I'm sure that you heard of that before. Now, Manchester United was originally owned by the Edwards family, but listed on the stock exchange in London, okay, later on to get more finance. However, in 2005, Manchester United was bought by the American businessman, Mr. Glazer. And Mr. Glazer, to buy Manchester United, Mr. Glazer has borrowed lots of money to buy this football club. So borrow lots of money to buy the football club is called the leverage buyout. However, this really upsets a lot of Manchester United fans. Uh, later on, I'll show you 
uh, why in a second. Now, uh, in 2012, of course, Manchester United was listed again, but not in London any longer. However, on the New York Stock Exchange in the United States of America. Right then. Now, the challenge is, okay, so currently we are not listed. However, in the actual exam question, that the examiner may say, okay, in order to broaden okay, our revenue streams, I would like to obtain a public listing status. So show me the reasons why this would be a case and the pros and cons of doing that. Or perhaps in the third question, perhaps that after a company's been listed, okay, a businessman took over our company and make it private again. Right, so if that's the case, then what sort of risks and issues do you need to consider in that? Of course, currently in the SBO exam, questions are quite common sense indeed. So, let me take you through my analysis. So firstly, if you were to use the LBO, which means the leverage buyout, which means to borrow money to buy the football club. Borrow money to buy the football club. So if that's the case, then I would say that this would increase the amount of debt okay, in the financial statement. So because the debt is so high, interest expense we need to pay will be so high, and therefore it is, it is highly likely that the football club will subsequently increase the ticket prices. Okay, so if that's the case, then it seems that the uh, club is like the profit-driven entity. Of course, at that particular moment in time, the fan of Manchester United opposed that. There seems to be a cultural shift from the uh, uh, sporting institution towards a uh, profit-making business. And of course, if the level of debt is so high, this will reduce the investments in the property plant equipment. Okay, for example, the stadium and facilities. Of course, over commercialization, such as you may be making several sponsorship deals. For example, you sell the naming rights of your home ground to others. So if that's the case, then it will certainly upset the fun okay, of this company. So I would say later I will take you through to three levels of strategies later on and to show you exactly that to engage with our fun of our company will be absolutely key there. Okay, I'll show you how in a second. Now, in 2012, Manchester United was listed again. Why? Because it was brought by Mr. Glazer using debt. So to list the company getting finance from the equity holders, I can use the money to pay debt, okay, so to lower the debt level. At the same time, yes, I can have more monies and to expand globally and especially making our brand more popular. So this is why Manchester United have chosen the area not in the UK any longer, but to list the company on the New York Stock Exchange. In order for Mr. Glazer or the family members to get control over that company, he's very clever indeed, because in the United States of America, you can have different classes of your shares. Of course, Mr. Glazer retains the Class B shares, which has 10 times of the voting power than the Class A shares. So, of course, maintaining such structure within that business enables the family members to still get control over that company. And of course, in the actual exam question, yes, you can always bring this thought okay, uh, to your script, that say to the examining team that, okay, if the company goes listed onto the stock exchange, how are we going to be, yes, helping the family members to control that business? Yes, you can use that idea, for example, different classes of shares by choosing where to list your company. Now, 
The next information I'd like to take you through is the strategies of our company. Of course, according to the ACCA SBL syllabus, we have got three levels of strategies. I'm sure they heard of that before. It's like the pyramid, something like this. So on top of that, it's called strategic level and then follows by a tactical level, i.e. how to compete with our competitors and the daily work, which means our operational level strategies. I mean, strategies would just to be the ways that you run your business. You can, yes, interpret that as a business model, something like that. And of course, you can also referring to the uh, Drucker's definition of strategies all about the long term stuff. OK, now, I'm not going to be recapping the theory part okay, of the strategy, but I would rather take you through to the application of strategies to the AT company. Now, firstly, my view is this. For the strategic part, which means the top level strategy, I would like to look at this, okay, related to AT in three aspects. Firstly, yes, we need to think about how to expand the business globally, and then followed by investing in infrastructures, for example, stadium or facilities. And thirdly, I would like to think about the innovation, especially related to the sustainability issues that we can differentiate from other football clubs. Of course, it's of diversifying the business, for example, uh, introducing additional port lines and so on. I'm not particularly interested in those areas. I'm sure that the examining team will not be very interested in those areas because if you see that the football club never did those things. Now, firstly, expand globally. I would say that there would be lots of cultural issues and even the political and religious issues that you need to consider. So an example I can give you is that when European clubs tour Asia and Middle East, yes, they would find, for example, the language issues, okay? Especially for the pre-season games, that the language bear barriers, uh, cultural misunderstandings, for example, the customs such as the Muslims and the political and the religious issues, for example, between Israel and Palestine and so on. So cultural sensitivity is always we need to bear that in mind when operating an international football club. To solve this, most likely, yes, investing in local market research of a pot potential differences in culture hiring regional experts will certainly help. So this means that you will need to put budget on these areas, okay? Making sure they always remember them in the actual exam. Now, secondly, it's the infrastructure investment. Yes, from the pre material I will show you in subsequent recordings, I've quoted here, is that the attendance for 80s Division 1 matches would just to be 96.5% is nearly to be full capacity in the industry, which means this is very good. However, I would say that, yeah, sometimes it may be seen as a failure that in the UK, yes, we've got a football club called Totham Hotspur Football Club, yes, located in London. It built a particular stadium costing one billion UK pounds. However, after it is built, yes, we have also the COVID-19, the attendance, yes, will be quite low. So this means that, yes, the investment was not quite successful. So therefore, yes, project management, you need to look at that very carefully. At the same time, the internal controls, okay? So especially when you're talking about the risk management to make sure that the project milestones will be audited, okay? So very, very important indeed. Now, the next area from a strategic point of view, at the top part of the strategy, will be the sustainability and innovation there. And here, I'm giving you an example. 
And other football club is called Forest Green Rovers. Okay, if you see that there. Now, according to FIFA, yes, it's been recognized by FIFA, the Forest Green Rovers Football Club is the world's greenest football club. Now, what it did, okay, as the ESG initiative, is that firstly, from an environmental point of view, it uses green technology to make sure that the lawn will be powered by 100% renewable energy. At the same time, yes, using organic pitch, that's important. So, uh, and also providing vegan manual, yes, would be the specific uh, steps that it takes. And for the social responsibility side, okay, it, it, it makes sure that the transportation will be sustainable. So, for example, providing electric bus services on match days, okay, to the fans and staff. From a governance point of view, yes, the club's owner is passionate about adopting sustainability initiatives, okay, inside the business and outside the business. So this means that this recalls the leadership part application, okay, to this company. I'll show you how in a second. Of course, yes, from a tactical point of view, I also introduced you and other three elements, okay, applied to the apt company and also even the um, operational strategies. Another three elements, okay, regarding the financial management and risk management and so on, giving you lots and lots of examples. But I'm going to be stopping this recording now because I would like to take you through to the tactical part from the next recording in our course. And of course, in our pre application, as you can see, not only I'm providing you with the pre analysis, but also I'm providing you with the tip questions uh, and also requirements and how we might answer the requirements by linking with the pre scene information there. So a lot of valuable stuff, okay, just to uh, increase the chances that you can pass the exam and to boost your exam confidence, okay, so uh, I'm here to help. Right there, I'm going to be stopping the recording now and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. APC, accounting for your future.